During this month's Invasive Strike Force EcoQuest Challenge, we're going to learn to report black and pale swallowwort. You're not seeing things. These perennial climbing vines are, indeed, also known as dog strangling vine. While they don't literally live up to their brutal name, they do form extensive patches that overgrow and smother native vegetation. Keep an eye out for these voracious vines as they wrap around or strangle other plants as well as themselves. Pale and black swallowwort look very similar when not in flower. Both species have long oval opposite leaves that are green and waxy, measuring about three to four inches long by two to three inches wide. The leaves of pale swallowwort tend to be a slightly lighter shade of green than black swallowwort. Flowers of both species are small and star-like. Pale swallowwort has a pink to maroon flower with petals that have a narrow base, whereas black swallowworts are a deep purple black and have petals with a wider base. However, during the month of August, flowers are no longer this plant's key ID feature. Instead, you'll be looking for their long, slender seed pods that kind of resemble string beans on a vine. In terms of habitat, black and pale swallowwort tolerate a variety of soils and environmental conditions. Swallowwort favors full sun, but may thrive in semi-shaded to densely shaded areas, as seen here. These species are disturbance and drought tolerant and can quickly spread once established. Furthermore, black and pale swallowwort have similar flowers to milkweed, the primary host plant for monarch butterflies. See the similarities in the flower shape? The swallowworts have that same star-shaped flower that monarchs often mistake for milkweed when they lay their eggs. But when the eggs hatch, there's nothing to eat. Even if the butterflies don't lay their eggs on this plant, Swallowwort can easily outcompete the native species once they have a stronghold in an area. Just look at this monocrop in this shaded woodland. A square meter stand of swallowwort is capable of producing 1,000 to 2,000 seeds per year, which are then dispersed by wind. It also releases chemicals into the soil that prohibit growth of other species. In other words, we need your help to locate these pesky plants to prevent them from propagating post-haste. Identification is the first step toward plant control. Now that you can properly ID the species, get out there and start reporting them. With your help, we can take steps to manage and control this invasive species. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about this EcoQuest or about our work, email us at invasives at nynjtc.org or visit the Lower Hudson Partnership for Regional Invasive Species Management, or PRISM, website at lhprism.org.